here today with Bert Smith. Bert Smith, how you doing? Hi, it's glad to, to have you. It's great to be happy. here. So you're from Springfield, Missouri. Yeah. You came a long way up here to see us. Um, now you're an artist too. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about the style that you play? Well, it's a it's a very broad genre of at least a half a dozen people across the country, and I guess a lot around Kansas City. A, a, a blues rock based style, uh, heavily. Uh, uh, influenced by classic rock of the 70s, which of course I grew up with, and yeah. uh, uh, and the early the early Jesus rockers, kind of the that pioneers seems to of be Jesus rock music. Coming back too to the younger ones, mm -hmm. do you notice that? Yeah. Okay. We we go to a very unique church of a lot of young people, and to see the majority of our church in Springfield is rather unusual down there. Is under 30, and most of them are musicians. And Seriously, in, independent so musicians. So go ahead, say your church. What, what's uh, the name Center of your church? City, Center, Center City, City Church. Uh, Hi, Center it, City. It uh, <laughs> morphed out of a place called New Brew Coffee House. Who's your, who's your pastor? Uh, Rich Kaczynski. Is Rich as close, Kaczynski. As close Hello. as I can say it. And, uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a great church full of, of young musicians, but it's really fun to see them kind of returning to that roots-based. So it's New Brew. Wow. They have a coffee house called New it Brew. It started as a coffee house. Okay. And then it's morphed into a church that's now looking to expand back very into a coffee cool. house. So yeah, it's very unusual. Very, very unusual. cool. So that reminds me a lot of As You Are. We are actually on the As You Are stage or Club Damascus stage right now. Uh, they are a band that m morphed into a church. That's an excellent isn't that That's incredible? Like, so it just it, it reminds me. So we're going to have to connect somehow with with this new brew church down in now. Do they use the word new brew anymore? Yes, it's still on the signs because that's the bulk of our deacons are the bulk of our deacons are probably under thirty, and uh, all grew up in the new brew coffee house. They brewed up. They brewed up. <laughs> as a matter of fact, I believe I believe we go through more coffee there per capita than maybe any other church in the, in a maybe a five county radius. Do they have a special coffee of their own? No, maybe someday. Maybe someday. Yeah. Okay. So you are Southern Rock and Blues. Now well, I not Southern Rock so not much. Not Southern Rock you know, so much. More, more blues. Almost British Invasion style rock. Okay, I'll have to look that one up. British Invasion. Kind of, you know, well, I mentioned earlier, it's kind of like if you took a cross between early Eric Clapton and melded that with Chris Tomlin. Then, then you kind of, uh, that's pretty that's close. That's quite a morph. That's a, it is a morph. Or merge. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. That's now, I've listened to your music, and it's incredible. Thanks. I really had fun listening to it. You rock. You really, uh, if you just want on a Friday or Saturday night, uh, if you're playing, I would, I would be there because it, it's fun. It's a fun kind of music. Now, tell me a little bit about um, whether you songwrite. Yes, uh, almost... <clears throat> Up until this last CD that we, we've done, I did with a band, everything I've ever recorded has been original. And two, two CDs with blues bands previous to recording Christian music, and now five, keep looking at my wife, five or six CDs of, four? Four or five CDs of Christian music, original Christian music, that uh, it's been just a wonderful experience. Uh, we started out, uh, working with a producer in uh, the Branson area who was uh, one of the Dillard brothers, Rodney Dillard. And he came out of retirement to produce my first CD. And as he was listening to songs, he said, you have a lot of songs of a spiritual nature. He said, are you interested in recording a Christian CD? And at that point in time, it was like, that's, yes. that, that's, that's what we want to do. And that's yes. the direction we want to go. Now, I'm, I'm seeing Diane, this is your wife, right, out in the audience. We have a one-person audience to, today. Um, let me, let's adjust this just a little bit so we can both get a picture here. Um, she, come up here, Diane. <laughs> That'll teach her. That'll teach her. <laughs> we have to correct something, something very important. Um, yeah, just, just come on come up right here on and just here. lean on in and, and, and tell the world <laughs> That your husband made a mistake. See, we're good at this. We tell yes, I'm used to it. Their pastor's name is Rich Yazinski. Yes, Yazinski. Now that is a hard name. It is a hard so, name. Sorry, sorry, Pastor. So, so hi, Rich. Yeah. So hi, Pastor Fred. <laughs> <laughs> pastor Fred. We're just gonna leave it at that, Pastor Fred. Yeah. Okay. 
<laughs> Thank you, Diane, for correcting I'll, that. I'll be sitting in the back from now on. Yeah. <laughs> I <laughs> got the pastor's name wrong. But you know what? When you have a name like that, that's you're bound to get it wrong. And he's a Cubs fan. What's that? Chicago Cubs baseball. Oh, is that's, that's not a good thing. Not, you're, no, you're, you're, it's, you're in it's, Missouri. It's sad. Okay, well, they won't go there. We'll just leave that alone. We'll, we'll edit that out. This will yeah. look great whenever wow. you edit us all together. Edit, edit, edit. <laughs> yeah, editing's good. <laughs> Okay, so what's the name of your CD that you made that this guy put together? Uh, the first CD we did was called Warrior. Um, it stems around um, uh, the song Warrior, which uh, is still one of my favorite songs, and one that it's it's one that for me uh, really it was surprising when I made the, made the transition into Christian music, because when you're used to playing four or five hours in club gigs and four or five hours of people, you know, having fun, but not knowing a thing that you've said or sang through the entire evening, to sing where people are listening to every phrase and every word was such a humbling experience that was really, uh, it was really powerful. It just really, it makes you think about everything that you're, every line that you that you write, every wow. word that you sing. Wow. Because it, it's sometimes it's just a line or a phrase that people come up and say. I liked that line. Or move, moved them and, and made yeah. a difference in a life. And, you know, the song Warrior is very, to me, is very moving personally. And whenever I see the reaction that it does with people, it's... it's so tell me about strong. Warrior. Um, it, it, it kind of, the idea was, it was kind of, I was... I was actually driving, I was still playing in a club band, and I was driving to a, a club in uh, Arkansas, and I had I started with this line, I am a warrior, uh, I am a warrior, I am a warrior of love. And then basically it's, uh, a lot of it's Paul talking to Timothy, fight the good fight, uh, you know, armed with love, shining light, and then talking about ready for, ready for judgment, being ready for judgment, and ready for the resurrection, and, um, I, the whole song just came, and I'd just been singing it in the car, just praising, and I, you know, in my van, going loaded with equipment, swerving all over the road. And I look up, and there's a highway patrolman about six inches from my bumper. <laughs> and I thought, well, this is going to be good. What you doing, boy? <laughs> Writing a gospel song, sir. <laughs> That's awesome. So did he pull you over? No, no, no. We got to the first crossroads, and he just kind of looked at me and went off. And I was like, Phew. I wonder what that was all about. <laughs> <laughs> His lights weren't flashing? No, no, he no? was just... Just riding, yeah? Was, yeah, just being friendly, I suppose. Wow, <laughs> that's interesting. Could he hear you? I hope, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> that would be funny. At least he didn't pull you over. That was a God thing. Maybe it was so. because you were writing a God song. Maybe we should all be writing God songs in the car so we don't get pulled over. <laughs> I got pulled over a few weeks ago. That's. I don't know if you're surprised, but... <laughs> 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 it was wrong. It was so wrong. They just didn't believe me. Yeah, they did. <laughs> Gotta be careful. Right. So, okay, so you and Diane are, uh, uh, Diane, your wife is here. So mm -hmm. is she involved in your ministry at all? I see she traveled up here with you. She uh, travels with me and uh, being physically handicapped and not able to do a lot of my own carrying and lifting. She uh, is always there to help and Very good. just uh, it's a ministry that we do together and I certainly couldn't do it without her. And uh, we do, uh, when we have the opportunity, uh, we will do a, if we do a chapel service at the Victory Mission down in Springfield, I'll lead the worship and lead the music and then Diane will do the devotional Very cool. segment of so it. So you, you actually speak. Okay, so Diane's the speaker, and you do the music. Now, you have a band. Mm -hmm. Tell me about it. Uh, well, it, 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 the, I had been a solo artist for a number of years. Uh, just, just as a singer-songwriter, it, it, it got to the point with me to be easier to hire people to do what I wanted done. And was really it, not... It is easier not looking to be Unless in, you in don't a have band. The money. Yeah. <laughs> looking looking to be in a band again was not really something that I anticipated and after a second round of spinal surgeries I um that's another that's another that's story another for another interview. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I answered a ad on Craigslist for a Christian blues band seeking lead guitar player lead singer. And I thought, well, in our area there is no such thing as a 
Christian blues blues guitar yeah. player, lead singer. Yeah. So I watched it for several months as my the doctor kept postponing my release date back into the real world. Yeah. And uh, he, uh, so when I was finally able, I answered the ad and I said, how many people have you had respond to this? And they're like, well, counting you. And so anyway, but, <laughs> but that, that band was, I, I didn't form it, but I joined it and it was set up to be a, it, the idea of it was to be a Christian blues band. And I played with uh, blues bands and worked with blues organizations around Springfield for years. But I'm never, what, what I write and what I play is always a lot broader based than blues. And you, right. you know, blues music is a very wonderful genre, very expressive, powerfully emotional genre. But if you don't understand blues, it's a very limiting genre. Okay. People don't, if people Explain think Explain that. Because uh, there would be a lot of musicians listening. Well, most people, whenever you, if, if you say, if, if, for example, with this, with the band as it started, you say you're a Christian blues band, people think, well, I don't like that slow, depressing music. Uh -huh. How can that be Christian? And very well, we played very few slow songs. Most of it was uh, New Orleans style. Um, well, okay, then people don't similar. understand the genre or the, the, what would you say, the technical beats and uh, progressions. In that there, With blues, you have your own uh, chord progression or um, mode or scale. And so you use that, and you can do speed. You can no. slow it down. You can, you know. If if yeah. you go see, a, if you if if you come to see a, a set of of ours at that point in time as a Christian blues band, we would do maybe one or two slow songs in the course of an hour and a half set. Right. Everything else very up tempo, very much. So it's rock the Christian that didn't understand it's, that blues. Actually, <laughs> well, a, a lot of. Am I right, Diane? <laughs> but that, but that's even broader. I mean, even yeah. outside of outside of quote Christian or secular music, okay. there are still those conceptions of the, the old the old black man sitting on the street Soul corner with sunglasses music. playing yeah. real slow, depressing the music. Blues. Exactly, exactly. And what people don't realize is my uh, my favorite line about it is is that uh, pretty much any any type of music that I can see that God gave us is a tool to work our way through sure. or to work our way closer. And it together. doesn't have to be all depressing. No. I mean, you can have hope in it. And I know Mission Blues is a big uh, blues Christian band up in Kansas City. And Bill Fields is on our um, board of directors. And they do the same thing. They go out and uh, minister the gospel and mm -hmm. they write their own songs. And I mean, people love it. People love it. So, you know, I, I think it's being more and more accepted uh, as you know, time goes by and people are realizing actually how fun the music can be, that, too. That's what, if, if we can get people to listen to us first, yeah. then they love what we do. Yeah. If, if you can get past the preconceptions. Yeah. Another one is Jimmy thing. Bratcher. I saw you write down yeah. that name. <laughs> There's another one, Jimmy Bratcher, but he actually goes, um, oh, he yeah, goes around world, the world. He's worldwide, yeah. yeah. He's, he's one of the, he's one of the, he and uh, two or three others, Larry Howard, uh, Glenn Kaiser, who I've had the opportunity to play with and uh, do some shows with. Uh, I used to have the Resurrection Band and the Res Band. I heard of them. Jesus People USA out of Chicago. Uh, incredible ministry. Uh, really a, just a handful of uh, people that are able to do this sort of thing. And they're bringing it to a ministry um, uh, point, and so that I think people are having a different perspective of what blues is. And well, what the ministry you can do always with comes it. first with it, and that's yeah. the the message in the ministry. And that's well, and the, you can bring it places you can't bring CCM. Exactly, and that's what we found is is one weekend we would be playing a, a, a secular biker party, and it was always so interesting. And one of my favorite things is we were playing a uh, a song called the wrote called Prisoner, and I've done it in a lot of different styles, but with this the last band it was in a very slow blue style and when we started playing it uh, this entire group of bikers gets up and starts slow dancing ah! and there's one point in the song where this guy looks up at the stage and he looks at his the lady he was dancing with and goes did he say jesus <laughs> and they both looked up at the stage and i went yes, yes. <laughs> We're slow dancing to Jesus. <laughs> ah! So, so it's, you know, it's, it's, that's fun, it's, though. Well, it's interesting, and it, it, and it is taking the word where it's just not going to go. Yeah, otherwise. It's, it's not going to get otherwise. Okay, so you have what pieces in your band? Uh, usually uh, pretty much a three-piece format. 
Mm -hmm. uh, oh, that makes it easy. Simplicity is yeah. my favorite. Uh, the um, as the, Bert Smith and the Walk was how the, the Christian blues band formed. Okay. Since we've got a new drummer who is more in line with uh, it, of, of taking it more into the ministry direction as uh -huh. opposed to just a performance direction, and uh, both both were great drummers. The the but as as bands change, you know. It's wonderful to find somebody who is of like mind with, with the ministry aspect of, of the thing. And uh, now he's also a broader scope than just a blues band. So we're able to branch out more into a into the into the, the rock stuff that I write as well as the worship stuff that I write. So you play so, electric guitar? I play electric sing, primarily. Write. Sing and write. <clears throat> and then you have a bass player. Bass and drums. Yes. Yeah. So that makes things a lot easier. Yeah, a lot easier. It does. It does. Practice my English. A lot easier. Um, so, where do you play? Uh, right now, we do uh, a lot of work uh, for charitable organizations. Uh, we do work with the Victory Mission in okay. uh, Springfield. Now, this is in we Springfield. Yeah, Springfield, Missouri. Yeah. We love. So, those if you're homes. looking for the Victory Mission in Kansas City or the area, stop. Well, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully we may hopefully we may get the opportunity to come up here. I would and like to see you well, up in so. Club D. So, have you talked to Chain Hutton about? Okay, we need to do that afterwards. Not yet. Not we yet. will get the get him booked, and we'll get the uh, everybody. Just look for Bert Smith on our site and on this radio station. So we will announce when you come. Well, we hope to we hope to be able to come up regularly. Uh, we. We uh, are starting to work with a group of uh, a ministry in Springfield that uh, there is a, a lot of, of Section 8 subsidized housing units in uh, the Springfield area. And uh, this group takes church into the Section 8 housing units. So I think they have eight teams and getting ready to expand to nine different housing units that they go out weekly and uh, do church in how do they do church units. in the, I mean, do they have like a community area? Some will be community areas, some will be outside, some will be in people's apartments. Uh, just it That varies. is incredible. It, it varies. It's an incredible ministry. Um, the. Uh, I want to do that. Well, it's exciting. <laughs> it really is exciting. And uh, last year that. we started working with them. and uh, That's incredible. You know, instead of wooing them into this building, you're wooing them to Christ, where they are. Mm -hmm. How amazing. It, it's great. And last and year we just we, last year we just started working with them. Uh, we're doing our first, uh, uh, it's, it's some a, a kickoff banquet for a new uh, area they're going into in... Uh, uh, first week of April, we okay. were playing with them, and they informed us that uh, they're going to be asking us to do a lot of the uh, block parties for each of the individual okay. units this now, summer. So. Is would it be possible that you could send us some of the dates for this? Oh, because sure, will. And then we can encourage some people from Springfield to actually go to some of these and support them, you that, know, start getting Springfield, you know, um, into ministry. That into the King Cat, the, when I first started seeing about the King Cat ministry, it really appealed to me as the sense of the musician's community. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's, it's people, you know, some of my friends were like, why are you joining an organization in Kansas City that, <laughs> you know, that's not really going to do a whole lot of good yeah. for you and what you're doing here? And it's like, well, it's kind of beside the point. Right. It's what they're doing in Kansas City that if if, if this thing spreads, yeah. it's only going to benefit musicians. Well, and the community does have gone beyond Kansas City. We are obviously a lot happens in the Kansas City area because we're here. You know, my office is right over there. You know, so uh, but we have had um, like Tawana Albert. Uh, I am going down in May to uh, Texas, and she is wanting to start a community down there through King Cat. Uh, she won't be president. She, you know, she doesn't, you know. And so, uh, but she's been longing to have a community of support uh, down in Texas. And so we will have her dates up and start mm -hmm. getting getting it going. We have a few artists in Texas around her already. And just starting some songwriting meetings is a great way to start. If you have a, uh, a group of people that songwrite, you start co-writing in your city. You meet once a month, regular basis. <clears throat> to share the songs that you've written personally, to share the songs you've co-written, and then to have a time in the afternoon to co-write. 
it actually helps artists to connect and what has happened in uh, the songwriting community in Kansas City is they are starting to perform together. <clears throat> One of the things that was really exciting is somebody came in and she was just a lyricist. She's a poet, you know. No. Poet didn't know it type of thing. And she came in and uh, one guy looked at her stuff. She goes, oh, this is urban, I don't know, you know, you know the trash can type thing, yeah. you know. Boom, boom, boom. And so they made this whole, they're making this whole project for, uh, we have the crossroads in Kansas City uh, once a month. It's first Fridays. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and they're considering putting something together for those nights. So ministry is coming out of these songwriting things. And, uh, and, and then they connect with other musicians. And it's just amazing what happens. Now, the musicians up here in Kansas City, we try to go to each other's concerts to support each mm -hmm. other, to pray for each other and, and whatnot. So uh, you'll get fan, maybe fans from other artists that say, hey, you know, we're supporting each other. This is not just about me out in, you know, La La Land. So that's what our SALT mission is. It's supporting each other. Um, so if, if someone's signing up for King Cat for themselves, you're right. It, it's just not going to work. Uh, you know, the people that s are signing up are giving to the organization to, pur to pursue and to uh, move the ministries forward. And yes, they are a part of that, but we don't make anybody stars. And I tell you what, everybody wants to be a star. <laughs> you know, where's the money? I want to sell all these CDs. And I want to say, well, that's not what it's about. You know, if you want to do that, you go to the world and to the Nashville and you can do that. There's nothing fine. wrong with that's that. Fine. There's nothing wrong with that. That's just not what we're about. We are about bringing the word uh, to the lost. We're about encouraging the, the Christian and, um, and each other and, so, and building up the kingdom. So, and we're, we're wanting to do that through music. And, well, it, to me, it may, it, to me, you see the community and you see the bands getting stronger for that. Yeah. And you don't, yeah. and you don't get that sense mm -hmm. of a musical community um, anywhere else that I've really seen. It, it's interesting. It, it's like really? here, here is our gig, and here is your gig, and yeah. we might come, you might come see us play, but we're not really going to talk about your band from stage. Oh wow. We we did it. Uh, I did a. Uh, show with another band and the first thing I did was talk to their guitar players and ask them if they wanted to get up and play and they were they, what? yeah they were flat they said you know they've been playing around for 15 years and it was the first time anybody had invited them wow to get up and play and it's like well that's just so how did they respond we well they played great we had a, we had a wonderful time and that you know and that to me is what it's all about and the co-writing thing I, I pretty much most of everything that I've written has been in a vacuum um just as a solo writer and uh, the encouragement of the co-writing and the writing community is such a, I, I think such an exciting thing for how much it can expand. Uh, well, relationships, yeah, you, you, you know, I mean, it, it's cause isn't that what it's about? Oh, exactly. I mean, Christ came to have relationship with us. So we have relationship with each other, mm -hmm. and as we're relating to each other, we're relating with him. And so the co-write brings giftings together. And, you know, I don't know how many songs will be pitched or taken or whatever. And some will, and some won't. We are pitching, uh, but at the same time, uh, some songs are used for nursing homes. Mm -hmm. Some are, I, I worked for a church for three years, and I would write songs for the pastor's message, mm -hmm. you know, and, and use co-written so co songs. And so, and we are actually, we have uh, Grace Street is going to be uh, rec uh, the uh, the studios. I'm sorry, is going to be recording a lot of the co-written worship yeah. songs, and we're going to be doing a worship project, and all the proceeds will go to scholarships for the school. Oh, so that's yeah, to raise up the next generation of artists. So we really hope that Springfield will be a part of of uh, that kingdom building. So well, uh, you know, you, you hate to use cliches, but when you say the fields are white, it's just such an understatement. Yeah. You know, because there's just, there's, it seems to me that there's just this underlying hunger mm. for this sort of mm. thing. And, um, it's a, it's a, it's a, the thing is, is that it, there's not very many leaders. And so, you know, when you have, and you've been president of an organization before, mm -hmm. 
you know that what it's like to be lonely, <laughs> frustrated. All the complaints come to you, you know, and you're like, I know, I know, I'm the only one doing this. <laughs> come on board, the frustration. But um, I think God is raising up more leaders, and it just takes people being organized about it. Um, and I know with King, I don't know about any other organization. Um, I, you know, come and talk to me if you're doing this. I'd love to support you. Uh, but and I know a lot of people ch are trying to duplicate it, and, and they just don't know how the inner mm -hmm. inner sanctum works. Um, but I tell you, the success has been behind not having your own agenda. It yeah. has had, it's been like, what is God saying to do? What is, how can we glorify God through this? And I tell you, the blessings come, you know, the funding right. is coming. The funding, we've been able to pay our bills every month. And I'm just like, thank you, God. But I am, we're not out to become um, famous or, or whatever. I mean, God is behind all of that, yeah. what we become. So it's not what we build. It's what he's building through us. And so if you have that mentality, you will have a long-lasting ministry. Yeah. And so, and then the board of directors came. And that was the biggest thing for me is becoming nonprofit or pending nonprofit right now and letting go. And, and so that, that was huge, letting go to, a, to different people having a say. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, but I went all control, you know, <laughs> don't ruin the organization. But it has been such a blessing. It's like having a group of elders in a church. Yeah. And so, and then it also lets other people come in and say, you know, I see this, I see that. We can improve here, we can improve there. And our board has just been very, very amazing. Well, so. people look at gifts so often as being a songwriter. Yeah. Or, a, a, or a, you, you're yeah. so gifted, you're a musician. It's like, you know what? If you would use your gift of organization to help this this gift of, yes. of music, <laughs> that's, that's when ministry happens. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. as, as a musician, I, 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 am, I, I am so, I so loathe self-promotion yeah. that I won't sell my own CDs. Okay, now well, we got to change that you know, part. It's, it's that's not self-promoting. It's like, you didn't tell anybody you had CDs that's for sale. That's Jesus promoting. Like, yeah, you know, they're over there. Uh, yeah. But, and yeah. Uh, to have somebody... King Cat will have to do that for you, I guess. That does well, that, and, that, and that to me is what I see is is the encouragement of this of an infrastructure yeah. for artists that allow them to be artists. Yeah. And that. Uh, well, and also changing the perspective and the way you look at things for artists. Um, and I've been through the same thing. I made two CDs, and uh, being up on stage, it, I just don't even. I don't even like going to the table and being behind it. You know, it's just like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why, why do you want me to sign that? I don't understand. I, I know. But it comes to the point where that's part of the growth. It's part yeah. of um, when somebody somebody buys a CD, they're buying the experience of the show they just saw, the ministry they just experienced, and they bring it and they experience it again and they experience it again. And for artists to keep making those those songs for ministry they have to sell the cds so that's a really good uh way to from the stage you say you know look you know i what i just did here you know what god just did through me here he did on those cds as well and if you want this ministry to continue you know take it home with you give it to a friend and i would be I would be glad to personalize it for you if you'd like you know my signature means nothing but you know, if you'd like it personalized, I'd be glad to do that for you. Um, it makes it so much easier to just put it all on God. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, it's God's thing, not mine, right, you know. Right, you need to write that down. You know? And that way, if they don't buy any CDs, you don't feel bad about it either. Be, you know, that would be a good name for a song is, yes. you know, put it all on God. You know? Put it all on God, you know. So uh, that has helped me. I still have difficulty, too, in the, you know, especially with the booking. It's like, well, why would, you know? <laughs> well, I was talking to a gentleman you introduced me to uh, you know? uh, that uh, organizes a festival up here. Yeah, Dave Lynn. And I, Everybody and, knows Dave Lynn. And I, uh, I said, uh, I said, I understand you have a festival. I said, and, and <coughs> you know, we're interested in talking about the festival. I said, well, that's a conversation. for That's not why I'm bothering you today. I said, I would rather give you my music and let you. Yeah. 
here for yourself. And then yeah. if you're interested, we'll talk about it rather than yeah. me trying to convince you on how great I am. Right. You know? Which I've already told Dave Lynn so, how great oh, you good. are. So. <laughs> He's already heard me talk about Bert. <laughs> so is the board. That's so, so, yeah. But that, uh, to me, has always been the thing that, that, that breaks the barrier is the music was always first and then the, right. then the conversation because it's... Uh, yeah. Well, I really appreciate you coming up to see us. Oh, it's our pleasure. Yeah. We've been wanting to for so long. Do you have and, a website? Uh, uh, we have, uh, you can contact us through Facebook. Okay, and uh, he is a friend on my Facebook. Yeah, you can so. contact us through the King Cat site, I believe. We're on, okay, uh, yes, we're on the on King, King Cat, Cat site. And uh, there's some uh, videos of the band in various stages on uh, YouTube that okay. you can always go to. And, and you're uh, Bert Smith, B E R T. B E R T. I mean, how can you forget that, Bert? There is a guy in England that plays Bert a lot Smith. of rugby clubs and does a lot of country music, and okay. that's not me. <laughs> <laughs> that would not be me. Well, so, you know. <laughs> yeah. Rugby. What is rugby? It was you like, know? when did I ever play that song? Oh, wait, that's not me. Well, I'm Connie Whitlock with King Cat Christian Music. I'm with Bert Smith, and I'm gone. See ya. Thank you.